Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank. Today I want to go over a little bit of a topic that I've been getting actually since I started this project. Since I first posted any pictures of the arms or the chest done or even helmets on Facebook or wherever, a lot of the questions I got immediately were, how are you scaling your armor? What are you doing? How are you measuring it? What programs are you using? And I want to let you guys in on a little secret. I didn't scale my armor. I did not scale my armor down for the original 100% scale model it was. When I started this project, I thought, yeah, let me make everything fit me. That's going to look great. But then I started doing more research and looking at other people's builds. I started get diving into more of the Iron Man community and the cosplay community because I'd never really been before. And I started to notice a trend. Some armors looked weird. Now this isn't to call anybody out. I'm not saying my armor is perfect. It's not. I like it. I've gotten good reception about it and I want to answer the questions from people who are asking me about it. I just want to answer why I took this path and how I got the proportions that I did. I started the build, I tried, I wanted it to look, you know, tight and fit to me, but the truth is I'm short. I'm five foot seven, five foot eight on a good day. I'm basically Tom Cruise for the rest of my life. That's fine. But the other problem is not everybody's built like a superhero. Not everybody's built with these, you know, wide linebacker Thor shoulders and this 26 and 28 inch waist. We're not built like that. We're normal humans with normal proportions. So getting ourselves to fit into a cosplay armor that has pretty unrealistic body proportions can end pretty badly and be very difficult. Early on in the project, I tried experimenting with every possible way to scale and get things to fit me. I printed out test rings. And what these are, are literally five or four millimeter thin rings actually sliced out of the parts of the armor. What you do is you drop the, the part into a program like um, slicer or mesh mixer and I, I think you can do this in Armorsmith too and what you do is you cut up the armor in half a little bit go up a little more and cut it again and it's gonna give you a, a ring a sized ring that actually will fit now I know if that's the bicep but I can't get it past my forearm it's not gonna fit it's too small so I gotta scale up a little bit I believe this test ring was 80 80 percent and then I moved it up to 85 percent and then I printed out my first set of arms and they fit great. They looked wonderful. They felt tight and I'm like, yeah, this is it. But then I started to realize, well, I won't be able to fit wires in this. And if I get hot and kind of my skin starts to swell, I won't actually be able to get them off. I could barely get my hand and wrist through the uh, armor's wrist to begin with. So I had to go back up. These were the 100% scale test rings for the thigh. This was the top of the thigh, this was the bottom, and they fit my leg perfectly. I also made a little caliper, and all this was meant to do was I could measure the width of my head and then actually take a nice measurement of this. You can print out tons of cosplay calipers with much more precise measurements. This was just a quick fix for me. There's also another program you can use called Armorsmith, and this program is great and it can help you so much if you do want that nice trim, perfectly fit armor. So please try that out. I'm probably actually gonna get that for my next armor build and give it a shot. But I started doing a bunch of measurements and I started doing a bunch of math and trying to figure out lengths and widths. And for some reason, I ended up with 85%. The arms are 85% and they fit good. So I'm like, all right, let me try printing the abs at 85%. That didn't work. These are so small, they barely even come pa halfway past underneath me. And these just were such a failure. And they came out pretty smooth, so that kind of sucked. So then I did more math, bad math, and then I ended up with 115%. I still don't even know how I got that number, but these were the abs that I probably held on to for the longest. These are in most of the build progress pictures and most of the update videos. And I had to do so much molding and trimming just to get them to wrap around me properly and meet up with the back. These just, these took up so much time that I, I this is probably one of my biggest regrets it wasn't just ditching these right to begin with because I tried to get them to work so much it just it was it was a waste of time so then i landed at this idea what if i stopped scaling my armor if i load the whole armor in cura or slicer or whatever and i look at the 3d renders it looks great it's perfect it's proportioned it looks wonderful and it's built for someone who's six foot tall well i'm not six foot tall so i should theoretically fit in it with some room to spare let's try that so while i still had the old white abs i started printing things at 100 percent I printed the arms at 100% and they fit. I, I could, you know, I could move. I printed the chest at 100%. I printed the back at 100%. And things started to actually fit me pretty nicely. Um, except the abs, which I just, again, reluctantly kept trying to save and redo and fix. And it wasted so much time. Eventually, I printed out the 100% scale abs. And well, lo and behold, I wish I had done this to begin with because they fit me perfectly. Now, why aren't these abs on the suit? 
eventually I upgraded to the V2 file abs. It was a release from DO3D of just an updated set, a new chest, new abs, new cod piece. I went with the abs because I put too much work in the chest. Anyway, beside the point. I printed these out, finally had abs that fit, and I just wish I had done the 100% to begin with because I just it would have saved me so much time and everything started to fit me. This was actually a 90% butt plate that just didn't quite cover everything. And the last thing I need at a Comic-Con is showing some cheek in my morph suit. So again, I printed another butt plate out at 100% and guess what, it fits perfectly. But then I started to print the hands and the fingers at 100%. This is the 100% pointer finger from the Mark 85 gloves from DO3D. I can't even get my pointer finger into that. These fingers are from a free file on Thingiverse, the Mark VI, gauntlet, uh, Mark VI Iron Man gauntlet fingers. And this is at 100%, and this is at 105%, just to make it a little bit bigger. Scaling is hard. Everybody's files are designed differently. This bit me in the ass when I printed a helmet. While trying to do my armor, I was also trying to find that perfect helmet, because we've, again, we've probably all seen that. You start to scale the armor a little small, it fits you, but then you need to make the helmet a little big to fit all the electronics and you end up with this weird kind of bobblehead effect. This is the 100% thingy, free Thingiverse Mark 85 helmet. This is probably the third or fourth helmet I actually ever printed and it fit me, it was just a little big. So having the actual model in real life, I decided to do some measurements and scale it down. This helmet's at 96%. Now, the difference might not really be too noticeable on camera, but this one fits me a lot nicer with just enough room to actually fit electronics in. This is how I scale my helmets. I print a test one, do some math, see how much wiggle room I have, and then print another. And then I get rid of the, you know, the big one. But that was just one helmet file. I printed out this helmet file and it fit me perfectly at 96%. So, well, let me try another helmet. So I had the DO3D helmet. This is the DO3D helmet 100% and it fits me like a glove. I didn't print this one first though. I printed this one. I got the DO3D file, figured, hey, 96% sounds good. Let me print a helmet at 96%. As you can see, it's a little small. So again, just another complication and you have to realize that some STL files are just saved and scaled differently than others. This is a helmet file off a of CG Trader by a modeler named Akira. Can't remember the last name right now. I got this helmet file to replace the DO3D one because I just didn't like how it looked. Again, printed it at 100%, did some measurements, did some math and realized that, all right, I can go down a little bit. And I landed on this helmet. Again, same helmet as before, just no battle damage. This oddly enough it is 96 percent i took a little bit of a gamble and this helmet again fits me perfectly so this helmet is going to replace this do 3d one just for looks so i left the suit at 100 percent and i did my best to scale the helmet down as much as possible to get rid of that big bobblehead effect and i think it's worked out pretty nicely but now we have another problem i'm printing the suit at six feet tall but i'm not six foot tall what do i do well, I got lucky with the arms. They fit in pretty nicely. There might be a little bit of a clearance issue, but what I was able to do was actually trim the bicep to slide up underneath my arm a little bit farther, and then the shoulder pad kind of takes care of the rest. But the legs are the problem. Now, how do I make myself taller in a cosplay suit without actually having to trim something to make the suit smaller? And the secret, lifter shoes. Now, I can't take them off right now because they're currently supporting the entire suit, and I just don't feel like disassembling all this to get to the shoes, but, I got myself a pair of boots that had a nice little lip to them and then there are little lifter two and a half inch inserts, little insoles that go into the shoe and make you a little bit taller. Between the shoe, between the lifter, and between just a little bit of gap at the top of the helmet, the suit, I end up being about six foot tall in the suit exactly where I wanted to be. The only problem I ran into now is my leg isn't actually aligned in the suit where it's supposed to be. So I had a little bit of trouble with the knees, had to do some trimming, but again, it was just a consequence of the route I took. I'm pretty sure I have a little bit of a longer torso and shorter legs where somebody might have really long legs and a short torso. So I kind of got lucky being able to fill in the upper half of the suit without any problems. And then I just had to compensate the knees to get them to bend so I can walk. Guys, this stuff isn't easy. It's not meant to be easy. There's no cookie cutter, A, B, C, D, do it this way method for this. And I, I wish there was. Maybe one day the technology will get there where we can 3D scan our whole body in our home upload it to a program, have the armor go on perfectly, and then print it perfectly sized to fit with all our proportions and motions. We're not there yet, it's still a new emerging technology. This is the path that I took to scale my suit, or in this case, not scale. Now, there is an alternative to this where we're talking about scale a lot, but when you start to scale things around, we're messing with the proportions of the suit. 
You could scale the entire suit down evenly to 90% to 110% and leave the proportions the same. But when you start scaling it to your body, your proportions do not match the suit. So if you did enough math and you, and you started to use a program like Armorsmith and you started to figure out that actually, I can actually print the whole suit at 95%, perfectly and I'll still fit in it. That's fine. Do that. That then you you figured it out and you're lucky. I was able to do this. It's worked for me and you know, I'm happy with it. Um my mobility is a little bit limited because of the size of the suit, but I don't really plan on break dancing in the thing anyway. I really hope that helped answer some of the questions you guys have about scaling and just how I approach this. Again, this isn't the end all be all method. Um there are just there, there's so many ways you can go about this. I even saw one person, they printed most of their suit in a wire mesh setting from Cura and that's how they were testing to see if parts actually fit nice. That's genius and it uses so much less filament than having to actually print the big parts, but wire mesh printing is a little difficult. If you guys have any questions, any more questions about this, just please message me, drop a comment, do whatever you need to do to get in touch with me and I'll do what I can to answer you. I have a lot more tutorials coming out. We're gonna be talking about the strapping and buckling system. I am gonna do a painting tutorial on how I did it because if there is something true about the modeling and cosplay world, people are cynics about painting and if you're not doing it their way, it's wrong. We'll talk, that's for another video. We will be going over the electronics and a lot of the other stuff in the suit. So please stay tuned for those type of tutorials as I get time to make them. Been super busy lately. I'm gonna be also starting a couple other series of videos, um, not just an Iron Man cosplay suit update, Mark 85 build. I'll be doing a general update, kind of talking about all the other projects I have going on, future projects, maybe even things just going on in my life to give you guys a little bit more immersion of what makes all this tick and happen. I just got to do my first giveaway contest on Instagram. I'm sorry I didn't advertise it on YouTube as much. This next one coming up, I absolutely promise I will advertise it more and give everybody the equal opportunity. But you also should follow me on Instagram so you could have been part of it. Congratulations to Dylan Burns 772 I think his Instagram name is. He actually won this little display Iron Man helmet. This is one of the ones I printed too small, but I don't need it. So I figured, hey, why not give it away to one of you guys and it might make one of you happy. So he's going to be getting this. And then starting May 1st, I'm gonna be starting another giveaway contest where the winner will actually get a full-size wearable Mark 85 Iron Man helmet. This is another one I printed, just I don't need it. And I'd love to be able to give something back to you guys for helping support me. So stay tuned for this giveaway contest. If you haven't already, it would really, really help me if you guys could, could uh, subscribe. Um, I'm trying to upload more and get YouTube more involved with all these projects and stuff. And it would just, it would mean a lot to me. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe and if you guys, again, if you guys have any questions, please message me, comment, do whatever you need to, and have a good day.